Good afternoon. Welcome to the DroidCon Italy webinar. My name is Lucy James. I'm one of the DroidCon Italy organizers, and I'm here today with Nav Singh. Nav, hi, how are you? I'm good, how are you? Yeah, I'm good, thank you very much. Thank you so much for joining us for a webinar today. Yeah, thanks for hosting me. Always a pleasure. So Nav's gonna be speaking to us about accessibility in an Android world. Um, all that remains is for me to say that this webinar is brought to you by Synesthesia and it is powered by AWS Amplify. Nav, have a great webinar. Okay, thank you. So, hi everyone. As uh, Lucy introduced myself, so it, uh, I'm working as a mobile software engineer at Manulife and uh, it's uh, located in Canada and I'm from uh, Montreal, which is in uh, Quebec. And if you want to follow me, there is a link. It's for uh, GitHub and Twitter. You can uh, find the code samples that we show. We will see in this uh, talk in my repost in my GitHub account. And if you have any further further queries or questions, you can just uh, tag me on Twitter. So today we will discuss about the accessibility in Android world. So let's get started. So first, what what is accessibility when it comes to the term in the digital world. So it's basically uh, making sure that everyone can use uh, your applications or or your uh, websites or anything. But when we are talking about the mobile, it's mostly about all the applications and applications like the native functionality, or sometimes we also have web views that we are just uh, <clears throat> loading websites. So we try to make sure that people, those who have a limited vision or they have any other physical impairments, they can use our applications as a normal people can use it. And we can now we can see like what's the impact of the accessibility in uh, terms of our Android applications. So it helps to increase your app's reach. According to the World Bank, there are 15% of the world's population. They suffer some kind of disability like low vision or I, I think uh, like uh, there are some other issues they might face. And people, they those who the, they have a disabilities, they depend on the apps or the services that support that support accessibility to communicate, learn, and work. And by making our applications accessible, we can reach more users. Even the people uh, with the, some kind of disabilities can use our applications. And it also improves your app's versatility. By that, by that I mean like. There is no only one uh, input method for your application, like just using your uh, touch or gestures for input. Like people, like uh, even it's not just uh, providing support for disabilities, but it also provides uh, various options to interact with your app, like using touch pads or uh, external keyboard, mouse, or or accessibility services that are provided by uh, Google to uh, to navigate through the different various kind of applications. Now we will see how Android framework provide us uh, um, features that we can use to enable accessibility or we can say supporting accessibility in our uh, application. So one of the main ways Android accessibility, accessibility is by uh, allowing users to hear the spoken feedback, whatever they currently visible to them or whatever is currently showing on the screen of your phone. And for that, the Android is using a tool called a TalkBack. It's a native native tool provided by the Google. And it's also available on the Play Store, which is most of the Android devices right now, they, they have it pre-installed. But if you didn't find it in your access under the settings of accessibility, you can grab it from Play Store and then start playing with it. And that, that's for uh, the basic introduction about the accessibility. Now we will see how we can uh, make, uh, integrate uh, accessibility in our applications and make sure like how we are, uh, and we will also see the testing like to figure out what are the issues that our applications or our user interfaces might have related to the accessibility. So let's check how we can make our applications more accessible. So the first one is the task flow. Is it 
it's basically the design as per the definition it's a well defined clear task flow with minimal uh, navigation steps so user can easily complete any kind of uh, any kind of a process which your application might have if your application let's say is a transactional and if user wants to send some kind of a greeting message or uh, if it's a bank app you want to some send a uh, perform any transaction to sending money to your friends so in that case we need to figure it out like with the minimal navigation steps user can user can use your application rather than to be a uh, more complicated and making sure that the navigate all the tasks are they are navigated by the focus controls and the second thing is the action target size so most of the user interfaces we have buttons and uh, edit text where user can enter their input or type something and according to the accessibility requ requirements all those touch targets like the buttons and where user can type something or whatever thing which is like uh, with which user can interact their minimum touch target must be a 48 dp which is uh, required roughly around 9 mm and or it might be greater than that but at least the minimum it should be 48 dips in terms of width and height so user can easily click perform click actions on those items And the next is the labeling the user interface controls. By that, I mean like there are various components. It's not just buttons or text views or just the text information on the screen, but sometimes we use cool images on our screens like logos or any kind of images that, that our user interface have, or there are some text views that we need a custom description for that like when the talkback is on it it should uh, speak something which is totally understandable to the user so labeling all the components of your ui it makes uh, your ui more understandable to the people those who are using your uh, application using the services called like a talkback or screen reader so there are two properties two ways to set that uh, for all the elements or, or for all the views Either you can set that content description in your XML files, like using the property content description, or if you are using Java or uh, Kotlin for your day to day development, you can use the method set content description and passing the string value that you want to use for your uh, particular views. So these are the two ways that you can uh, use to labeling your uh, user interface controls. And next one is the uh, enabling the focus based navigation so when user tries to use the hardware based dora software or directional controls like d-pads or trackballs or external keyboards in those those uh, just putting those different uh, kind of external inputs you can uh, set the navigation uh, <clears throat> navigation graph i can say for your layouts and it it's by default it's like uh, how you write your layout so it goes like that like first view first like first come first serve but if you want to make a custom navigation for your layout so you can i you can set that different properties for your xml like from this view where to go to when user taps the left arrow or when user taps the right arrow or top or bottom we will see in the next slides how we can set the custom navigation So now we will see various uh, code samples that we we can use in our uh, applications to make our user interfaces or uh, views uh, more accessible. So in this slide, I have a three different uh, three different uh, properties that I am going to explain you. So the first one, as we described, like when it comes to labeling our uh, views, like there are uh, decorative views. Let's say I'm using the image button. And it's uh, if I'm not providing content description, when the talkback is on, it will not speak anything about that element. So a user might get confused, like what this element is right now. Uh, the talkback is uh, focusing, right? So you can provide a string value in your XML files. Here I'm referring to the add node description string, which is in uh, your resources. 
or you can set it to null if you just have a logo and you don't want to provide any content description for that you can simply pass a null value here and when talkback is on it will simply ignore that but this field it will not go to the image button and it will simply skip it and the next this right side so the left side i have a text view and we have a properties android foxable and the screen reader foxable true so these these true properties they behave the same but the second property screen reader one it's only sports uh, api p or higher so if your app is sporting api is uh, lower than api 28 i think p is 28 so if you are sporting lower than 28 you can use a foxable to be on the safe side but if you are sporting android p and higher you are good just to, to use a screen reader flexible set to true so whenever the talkback or any other screen reader is on it will informing that talkback or those tools that this is accessible and they should process it and uh, this, the next example is android accessibility heading this is the new uh, new property or i can say new addition to the accessibility properties or uh, accessibility functionality in android side most of the time we see in the websites we see uh, like they they combine the sections in the under the headings so user can easily move based on the heading based navigation so in our case this will help users to understand that this this uh, particular field is behaving like a heading for the next content which might be there is a might be a long text and we have headings so just to explain them more uh, more uh, in a more better way or providing a cons consistency across the different platforms like web and mobile the added accessibility heading of uh, property and it also only available for uh, api p or higher so if you want to use you can simply suppress that warning using these tools target api property and if your app is uh, supporting lower versions of your uh, android like p lower than the p then you can set the cons uh, content description like a custom that i show you earlier like set content description and you can provide a heading uh, in that method so when it process that a particular view it will speak something that which you so user can understand that this this particular field is a uh, heading for uh, some content And here in the left side, the first example that I show you the custom navigation. So here, if you see the property next focus forward, I added to all the views here, next focus forward, next focus forward. So I have a, let's say we have a four views. If I don't add any um, focus forward property or there are other options like focus, I think left, right, top, bottom. So if I don't add this focus forward, but when the top back is on, what it will do is it simply goes from from first view to next view and so so on so it's hello world then hello world two then three and then this last image but i want to go from this for a first uh, hello world uh, text view to the third one and from third it goes to the second and then from there it goes to that image with the last one so this is basically the custom navigation so when user tries to use it with the like a keyboard or the arrow keys then the navigation that you have defined for your views it will the accessibility like the talkback or screen reader process them according to the those setting those those values and also in the in the second example there is a property called label for so this is like a grouping uh, different fields together like edit text we have like where user can enter let's say password or a, username so we are providing labels on top of them like username we are simply saying username but when it comes to if we add the property label for and providing the reference to the that edit text in this case i provided username entry which is this edit text so when user comes to the that when the talkback is on and user comes to the this view it will process these two as a one entity because we provided that this is used for this particular field and same for uh, for this text view we i added the reference for password entry so when password entry is highlighted it will use this text view as the label for that so that user can uh, get the idea like what 
what they what we are expecting from them to type in that field but this might not be a useful for now because we are using material design library for uh, almost all the components and there we have like a text input layout which is providing this functionality for us but for on the safe side if you are still not using those uh, components from material design you can uh, you can provide this kind of functionality using the label for property and then there is a property called accessibility live region and it has three properties called three values that you can set. It might be assertive or none or polite. So what it basically property tells to the talkback or to the screen reader, like sometimes we have, uh, let's say the login page and when the login fails, we show some kind of error message on top of the page. Let's say some wrong credentials or whatever. So if the talkback is on this and whatever is the currently highlighted field or selected field or whatever, uh, UI component talkback is right now processing. This property will tell to the talkback or inform to the talkback what to do when this particular field is visible or is active on the screen or it is it's uh, shown to the user. So if we set it to assertive, that means like talkback will over, it will tell to the talkback override whatever it's doing right now and just focus this current field and tell to the user about this this particular view. And if we say polite whatever talkback is right now doing let's say it's uh, speaking about the password one like you are currently doing some uh, interaction with password field and after the finishing the current pro uh, current views uh, information or processing the current view selection it will uh, go to it will come back to this view and process it so you can uh, and the none is like don't do anything if this field is shown to the user or not just like in this case, no, no action required from talkback. So you can set these values according to your requirements. And the second example is, uh, it's a grouping of a diff com multiple components and pro and telling to the talkback or, or a screen reader or any accessibility uh, tool to process them as a one entity. So sometimes let's say we have a basket or where we show like a quantity and then the next to that label, we show like a, how many quant how many items you have in your basket, right? So it, it's like quantity then 12 or any number. So we don't want to talk back to process those two entities as a separate, like first it say, it's, a, it's selecting the quantity and then it goes next to the quantity actual the actual number so in that case you can group the those multiple views in a one layout in this case i wrap them as one uh, relative layout which is the parent layout of these two text views and same for uh, the this one i wrap those uh, views in a parent layout and you can use those two uh, that we already discussed properties like the screen reader foxable or uh, foxable and if you are sporting p or higher you can simply go with the screen reader one but if you are uh, sporting lower than p you can uh, use flexible or you can set both of them so this is these are the few sample code examples that you can simply integrate into your uh, layouts that will help you to manage the accessibility related functionality in very uh, easy way so that, that's all about the basic integration of your accessibility related functionality in your uh, Android applications. But now we will uh, see various approaches for uh, how we can test our accessibility and figuring out if there are any issues in our uh, UI in terms of accessibility. So there are uh, basically four or five ways that we can uh, test our accessibility related functionality in our applications. The first one, it's the mostly used, I can say, is the manual testing. So we install uh, services like TalkBack, Screen Reader, and we turn it on and going through each and every page of our uh, application. And we make sure that uh, the, all the information for all the UI views is easily understandable to the end user so they can actually perform whatever action they want to do. 
and then we have a testing tool analysis tools they provide some kind of analysis and i highlighted those tools like talkback is also comes under the manual testing because it, it's not doing anything by their own it's the it's the tool the people use for uh, if they have any disability to access your applications but there is a tool called accessibility scanner and it's freely available on the play store and this is this comes under the analysis tools basically i can say because it you you use it and then uh, it will provide you various uh, various uh, issues it will identify the issues on the layout and it will generate a reports and provide you the it's not just highlighting the issues it also provide you the information like what you actually need from your side to fix those issues and you can use this and it it provides a lot of uh, functionality like you can share the reports with your uh, dev team and taking actions from those based on those reports and then there is automated testing like if you heard about espresso and roboelectric this is the these are the ui testing frameworks provided by uh, the espresso is from google and roboelectric is the another one and you can integrate the accessibility testing within your uh, ui user uh, user interface testing and we will see it's really a uh, very a uh, simple one or two lines of code and it will help you to figure out any ui accessibility issues at a very early stage of your development and then there is a user testing like getting feedback from real world real people like we we hand over our application to the people those who have any kind of disabilities and we will see how they can like reading their mental state and how they are performing their actions with our app and then from there if we we can analyze their uh, activities within our app and we will go we will uh, move from there and the last one is the pre launch report and this is on the google play console like when we are submitting our application and play store processing it generates various reports and there is a one report which is a uh, which which only shows the issues related to accessibility so this is where this is very uh, handy tool like before actually hitting the final uh, like the providing the your application to the public you can see if there are any critical issues related to accessibility you can uh, figure out in this and this is the last i can say last stage of your application before it actually hits the market so you can uh, check those reports and take uh, actions based on those reports now i will show you the code sample like how you can integrate the accessibility testing with your espresso user interface tests that you i suppose that you already have in your code base so this code is written in kotlin and uh, it's uh, basically uh, same for uh, java so companion object basically for uh, to make declaring method as a j static and the jvm these are the annotations for uh, testing jvm static means like telling to the jvm that this this method is a static so that when it process this method from calling it will treat it as a static method as in uh, as we have in java so there is a accessibility um, uh, method which is accessibility checks dot enable and it will enable the accessibility checks for your layouts so once you integrate this into your test it will also not just testing whatever tests you have it also testing the accessibility related to those particular uh, fields that you are interacting in your uh, your espresso tests and on the other hand i there are various properties that you can set on these uh, with this accessibility checks enable so there is a set suppress result matcher so what it do is is like you can define if you want to ignore some kind of uh, accessibility related issues let's say there is a text in this case i i added the rules like ignore any uh, text contrast view check on this particular field so if there is any color issue it will not failing my test but it will simply ignore those those that i added in this result matcher and then there is a pro uh, <clears throat> there is a flag set run checks from root view <clears throat> so what it do is like the difference between these two is only this line the set run checks is what it do it, it not only test the accessibility related to the particular view that we are interacting 
but it it tells to the framework or tells that espresso that run the accessibility checks for all the views that that my current activity or current layout is having so let's say you have five components in your ui and you are testing only functionality of the button like when you click for the button it performs some action but we are, if we set run checks from root view what it will do is it for the accessibility it will check all the five views and if there is any issues find with those five views it will fail your test and provide you the information in the logs like what might be the cause of uh, failing of your test so now i can show you uh, actually the demo of various properties in how we can integrate those in the accessible uh, applications and we will see the test like how tests are failing and what we can see and uh, how we can identify the issues or the logs for the test so let's uh, see so these are the few references i will uh, share my slides at the end of this talk so you can also go to these uh, slide uh, references to learn more about accessibility in android so let me share my android studio yep. so here i have a five one two three four four components in my layout so if i selected a image view there is a property called important for accessibility so if i remove that property and if you see the image view it's get highlighted and if you just hover over it and you see here it's it says me like it's missing the content description so if the talkback is on when it comes to this uh, logo of espresso it will not it, it doesn't know about anything about this view like what it should speak or what it should tell about this view so there are only two options either you can set the content description that i mentioned you earlier by passing any string value or you can set it to null or if you don't want to set content description to null you can set important for accessibility and it has few values and if you set it to no that means like when the talkback is on it will simply ignore this this uh, this particular view so it's just a decorative so user like there is no any information that user needs when it comes to this particular image view and talkback will directly move from this button to this particular field next and then I have a button, if you see here, I set its uh, width and height just to 32 diffs, just to show you how accessibility automated tests figure, uh, found those issues. Like the minimum, as I told you, the minimum height and width, which is required, it's a 48 diffs. So I just make it like a 32 diffs. So this is like uh, various properties that you can set on your properties. Like these are the navigation properties, like next focus left, focus up, focus down forward right these are the properties that you can set and then passing the reference id like where to go next now i will show you the test so i have written one test and uh, that i show you the layout that that small button it will open the browser so i'm testing that and here i write the that method that i show you in the previous slides like setting the run checks from root view. So if there is any issues, it will uh, show us the failures. In our case, when it performs the click on this button, the test will fail because we have only width and height set to 32 dips. So let's run this test and we will see what, what how the logs will help us to figure out that, uh, that failing cause of our test. And to the another thing to enable the accessibility integration in your espresso test, you need a dependency which is espresso accessibility. And this repo code, this code is on my GitHub. You can uh, check from there. So I added the accessibility dependency here from espresso. So now our test is running. Let's see.
so if you see the logs here our test is failing and it's be, it's not because of the functionality or it's not about the any um, other functionality of your ui in terms of ui but it's failing because of the accessibility so it says there was a one accessibility error so if you go to the next line here it, it explaining the issue like the button name is this and all the properties here and if you go move to the last and here is the main issue like it says like view falls below the minimum recommended size for touch targets so minimum it says us like 48 dips required but actual size is 32 dips so we go to our uh, layout and then we see open browser button is here we have 42 uh, sorry 32 dips which you can set now we will set it to 100 dips our button i think it looks uh, much bigger and we will see if our test is passing now and now if you see our test is passing and because i have installing it this app is first time so it's uh, yeah so in this case, it's our test is passed because we fixed the issue related to accessibility, so there is no issues. But it's not just uh, showing you the issues related to the the size; it also shows the issues related to the uh, context, color contrast for all the all the all the views. But if you see the code here, I suppressing the text to be changed. This rule that I show you in the code, like don't don't fail my test if there is any issues related to the color contrast. So if there is any issues, it this is keeping those issues. And if I if there is any issues related to the text contrast, now it will failing our test and showing the respected error message in the logs. If if that's the case, yeah. So it's failing now, and it says like there is accessibility error, and now the the resource name is text to be changed that we are previously ignoring. And if we go to the end, it says like it does not have the required contrast of this. So there is a standard on the guidelines of the accessibility guidelines that the, in the references I show the links. It it provides you the information like minimum color contrast like in the terms of background and the foreground, so the user can easily read your text. So actual contrast in our case, it's uh, here it's 1.423 something, but the minimum is required is 3.0. So these are the these are the these are the issues that you can easily identify using uh, automated frameworks like espresso or Electric and just integrating your uh, accessibility test with those so this is all about uh, the accessibility related uh, functionality so you can i already explained you various things and you can learn more about from going through the reference links and let me show you the accessibility scanner so this is how it looks like when you go to the play store you can just look for accessibility scanner and it's a freely available and once you install it you can just follow the guidelines and it shows you the screens like this and you hit the record button and it will record the current ui and if there are any issues you will see into the record that it generates afterwards and same for the top uh, uh, accessibility suit. It's also by the Google here. You can install it if your talkback is not enabled by default. And then you can see here, you can go under the accessibility settings and then the, turn the talkback on off and go through this basic practice, like how you can actually navigating your applications using that talkback. So, Yep, this is uh, all about the basics, I can say, for accessibility, but it will help you to understand uh, how you can integrate the accessibility, how you can test, and making your apps more versatile and more uh, more you can reach to the people, those having any kind of disabilities. Thank you, everyone. And if you have any questions, just uh, show, like, uh, just uh, tweet me or just uh, follow, like, just comment on this YouTube video and I will uh, follow you guys here. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Nav.
for this wonderful talk, very useful. And we'd like to thank uh, uh, Synesthesia and uh, Nav for this wonderful talk, very useful. And we'd like to thank uh, uh, Synesthesia and uh, Nav for this wonderful talk, very useful. And we'd like to thank uh, uh, Synesthesia and uh, Nav for this wonderful talk, very useful. And we'd like to thank uh, uh, Synesthesia and uh, Nav for this wonderful talk, very useful. And we'd like to thank uh, uh,